Next up is Maricel Sains. She's the founder and CEO of Compound Foods, a food tech startup recreating coffee without coffee beans. Mary Sell is a Costa Rican native. She's a bachelor in commerce from University of British Columbia and attended Singularity University Global Solutions. She's been featured in the Forbes 30 Under 30 impact category and has participated in numerous events. Mary Sell is gonna tell us about her company, Compound Foods. Hi everyone, as you heard, my name is Maricel. I'm the founder of Compound Foods, the creator of Minus. Um, as was mentioned, I'm originally from Costa Rica. This is my first time in Hawaii, and I feel strangely at home, because it's quite similar. Uh, both very beautiful, both make tons of great coffee. I already visited the one coffee farm in Oahu, so um, I'm just really excited to be here. And tell you a little bit more about what we're doing. Um, so our goal is to create products that are climate-proof, at the right cost, mouthwatering, delicious. Our first target is coffee, and I always say no one wants to drink bad coffee, especially not me, but with a reduced burden on the environment. And we do this using fermentation. So what we do is we leverage inputs that are low impact. So we look at upcycled products, products that are low in water use, low in carbon emissions, and then we use fermentation to transform them into high value products. We've built a platform that starts with a series of databases. So we've built a database over 175 different ingredients where we've mapped their molecular composition, their sensory profile, and their impact. We've also built a large library of strains where we've sourced coffee cherries from different places around the world, grown their microbiome to try to understand how different microbes help us develop different sensory profiles. And then we select the best strain and we put it on the a controlled fermentation process. We do what we call the reconstructed coffee cherry. So from our database, we look at which ingredients would have the same molecules as coffee that we can feed into our microbes, and then look at tailoring the process to develop the flavor notes that we're looking for. We've built also a sensory and molecular analysis around this, so we use GCMS and a trained sensory panel to look at how we're developing these sensory profiles. And this way, we create new products. So we believe, we, we think about our defensibility strategy in three pillars. So we filed two patents already. We think about trade secrets. But as the world gets bigger and bigger in databases, having this understanding of different ingredients and different molecules is what we think is going to give us a bigger moat around our platform. We believe through fermentation we can change the future of food. We're starting with coffee and then going into other categories like chocolate. So um, why are we starting with coffee? A, because it rocks. Raise your hand if you had a coffee this morning, or two maybe. Um, so coffee is the second most consumed beverage in the world after water. I generally believe the world runs on coffee, and I love the stories about how it was prohibited for women to drink coffee you know, years ago because it would get us too active. Um, but coffee is also a really resource-intensive crop. One kilogram of coffee creates around 29 kilograms of carbon emissions. And when we rank it amongst other foods, it actually creates more carbon emissions than poultry, swine, fish, eggs, all these products that we're already looking at alternatives. But then the other problem, and the scariest one, is that climate change is threatening the future of coffee. Coffee grows in the coffee belt, where Costa Rica, Colombia are a part of, and also in the Kona belt, because we share similar conditions. I always say that coffee crop is a little bit like me, that it doesn't like above 30 degrees because it's too hot, and under 25 degrees is too cold. And as climate change is changing temperature, changing levels of rain, we're on track to lose 50% of the land where we currently grow coffee. So that's gonna leave a gap in supply, while we know the demand is doubling, and in many cases tripling, because Gen Z really, really loves their coffee. And that's our goal. Our goal is to disrupt the $100 billion market coffee market with our product called Minus, Coffee Minus the Beans, where our goal is to have a product that's high quality, at the right cost, but with a reduced impact. So I just want to double click on those three points, and I'm going to go extra fast. So is it delicious? We surveyed over 650 different consumers in San Francisco and sampled our product, and 95% of them, they said, they like their product as much or more than their traditional cup of coffee. So we know that consumers like their product and that it's um, at the right quality. 
Then we go into cost. So we've done a techno-economical model. As we know, coffee is a commodity. So we um, built a model where we know that in two years of launch, we can actually hit price parity with coffee and compete. We're looking to scale up using the idle capacity within the food fermentation space so we can scale up quickly and economically. But also for us, impact is incredibly important. So we did a life cycle analysis to compare the use of resources between our product and coffee, and we know that we use significantly less water, create less carbon emissions, and less land use. But we're also thinking about the farmers. What happens with the coffee farmers? 80% of smallholder coffee farmers live below the poverty line. So we want to donate a percentage of our revenue to help them transition into more climate resilient crops. We have an awesome team. Um, my head of R&D, she's a PhD in food science, spent six years directing the food science department at Eat Just, developing their plant-based egg. In the last two years at Bright Seed, and we have advisors like the former CMO at Impossible Foods, CMO at Suja Juice, as well as from Synthico. Um, we're backed by some of the best investors on the climate space, and I think that's my time. Thank you so much. <laughs>